Welcome to Arts Talk TV. We're putting a spotlight on creativity. Hi, I'm Karina Lawrence from Arts Talk TV. We're here at the Brisbane Dance Festival, which is a huge one-day dance event celebrating all things to do with dance. And I am here speaking with the patron of the event, Mr. Anthony Iken. Hello. So tell me, what does it mean for you to be a patron of the Brisbane Dance Festival? Well, when I was asked, I was so chuffed because it's the first time I've ever been asked to be a patron. I'm always teaching or I've always got a booth or something at these style of events. To be a patron was just really heartwarming and the way in which it was explained to me, full it was a recognition of the, the things that I've achieved within the dance industry, specifically in Queensland. And sometimes you can forget the impact you've made onto other people when you're just in that lane of hustling and getting the next gig and trying to make a difference and teaching and all of those kind of things but it was just a really beautiful kind of reflection of all the the good that I've had the opportunity to create. You're a recognized dancer, performer and choreographer and a motivational speaker. Before yep. that I was a gymnast. Ah. I'm just a tall guy you might not be able to see on this video but I'm six foot three and that in gymnastics is pretty much a no-go zone. So I kind of was got to the highest level I could before they were like, we can't invest much more money in this because it's not gonna work out to the level in which you want. And then I went into aerobic gymnastics, which combined music with all of these skills. So that was my introduction to dance. It was like a natural progression for me to move into that area. And, and looking back in hindsight, all those skills that I acquired along the way make perfect sense as to the type of dancer I was, but even more so now, the type of choreographer and creative director I am. So with regards to the BDF, what would you say, uh, obviously it's all about education, inspiration and a lot of fun. Yeah. What would you say is a pinnacle part from an educational point of view? What I've loved watching the event so far is the collaboration you have your studio teachers and you get the people that only your studio brings in. This event kind of just puts all of that aside. Dancers are all dancing with each other. Everyone's mingling. There's no sense of studios here. It's just a sense of amazing opportunity and classes and teachers and collaboration and teamwork. And that's what I love so much already about this event. What was a standout moment for you while you were teaching? Well, I got to teach to the seniors and the juniors, just as one big group. And I think the standout for me was just seeing that dances for everyone and it wasn't age specific. It didn't matter how tall you were, short you were, what training you had. I just felt a really beautiful vibe as a teacher. You uh, spent some time abroad in Paris yes. where you danced at the Moulin Rouge yeah. and then when you returned you were part of So You Think in Dance. I went straight from the Moulin Rouge into So You Think. Felt like I was at the pinnacle of my career and I just wanted more creative creativity. I um, so came home and So You Think was auditioning straight away. I did season one so I didn't know anything about it but I didn't have any like TV training or interview training. If I was to look back on my time there, I just think the bit that I loved the most was growth in a brand new industry. Yeah. And I'm all about challenging yourself and taking on brand new things to create like brand new mindsets and behavioral patterns. So looking back, it was a whole new industry that I just kind of loved and learned from and I love that experience the most. Initially working with Angelus Productions, creating a lot of Cirque style shows, Pink Flamingo, incredible club yeah. in Broad Beach on the Gold Coast. So it, do you have anything specific within your creative process for each show that you could maybe guide the audience through? I pitch myself as very much a research choreographer. So when I go into a project, I need to know the storyline, the genre, the um, what the director's thinking, what the creative director is not even saying yet, what's in their brain, and then I like to go away 
and do as much research as I can and planning. You then embarked on some new adventures, uh, spent time abroad working and choreographing for David Atkins Enterprises. The World Handball Championship. Ah, that's it, in Qatar. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. It's wow. this sport where you, it's soccer but throwing with a smaller wow. ball, it's incredible. And they had their own sort of ceremony. Oh They're on a massive event. Yeah, Kylie Minogue, Gwen Stefani, Pharrell Williams. I worked for David Atkins as a dancer. Yep. And this was my first time on the um, creative team with him and it was incredible. I'm such a fan of him, what he's done, the path he's created for so many others like myself to be able to um, work in this industry. So it was a pretty amazing experience. You also moved on and did uh, Thunder Down Under in <laughs> Las Vegas. I'm not working with professional dancers in that yeah. sense. It's just ridiculously good looking men. <laughs> the challenge was always working with non-dancers sure. to create a Las Vegas sold out show. We generally don't do that. We're either teaching dancers or we're working with dancers that have gone through an audition period that by the time they get to you in the show, they're the best one for the job. You've taught a lot at, yep. uh, around the world. Um, you've worked with a lot of artists, mixture of non-dancers, students of all different levels. Do you have a key recipe or what would, what would you suggest is um, probably the easiest way to make people feel relaxed? I think as soon as you can get people out of their own head and into learning something new, you've won them over. It's a personality trait, it's keywords that you use, it's a vibe that you create. Once they switch from that into the focus of learning something brand new and authentically want to learn that thing, no matter whether they're elite, beginner and everything in between, you've created an atmosphere yeah. where people want to be there. Recently choreographed uh, the, as a movement director for she the Shepherd film Die Young. Yes. I love what they do, yes. their energy, their messaging, their, I just love what they do. So the opportunity came up to cast dancers, supply dancers, come work with the concept, say how dance would fit into that. So it was a step in the right direction for me of not necessarily choreographing the steps, looking at the big picture yeah. and bringing in my team. I brought in 30 dancers, I think. I brought in creative mind of Amanda Taylor. So as I create the steps, I want to step back and look at this from what shots we should use, what angle, the whole love it. the whole picture, and I really loved it. And they, those students were my students at the time. They were my full-time students. Wow, okay. So it was an amazing opportunity for them to be involved in such a high-level film yeah. clip experience. Yeah. And when you see the end product, they do not look like students. No. They look like absolute professionals. You live between the Gold Coast and Brisbane and you run your successful business, Global Dance Pro and I Can Achieve. Yep, I Can Achieve is the new one and it was born out of COVID. I was living in America with my husband at the time and we were on a journey of surrogacy so I was looking for new avenues in which I could create cash flow and things that I loved and new yep. business opportunities. I'm very much wired like that. And I thought I've been life coaching and speaking to people for as long as I can remember. It's part of my DNA. So I qualified myself in that space and launched a business I can achieve, which is all speaking and coaching. Dance will always be a huge passion of mine, but I'm really privy to the fact that there's a new passion and a new flame that's been born within me and I'm loving exploring whatever that looks like. I love helping other people. Yeah. I love seeing transformation in others and if my stories or my insights can help with that, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. It's when people hear success, they think of money or status. And to me, success is different on everyone. To me, success can just be at peace. To me, success can just be confidence, self-confidence. It can be abundance. I'm not saying it doesn't, you can still want a billion dollars and yeah. you can still want to own an <laughs> empire. That's success as well, but it can be different on everyone. Some people, yeah. it might just be a family. It might just be connection with others. Mm. Um, and so I like to work on whatever success looks like to that individual or Perfect. that company. Definitely. Yeah. All right, well, Anthony, we have a really fun little segment on Arts Talk TV called the Shutter Speed Challenge. Yeah. So as quick as you can, are you ready? Are yes. you up for it? Okay, what's your favorite thing about being creative? Confidence. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, person you most like to meet? 
Mariah Carey. Wow, okay. If you had to label creativity with a colour, what colour would you choose? Rainbow. <laughs> what would you miss most about the arts if it wasn't around? Um, live entertainment, being moved. Yeah, in affected, yeah. And in one word, what does the arts mean to you? Life. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anthony, for stopping by My and pleasure. sharing your awesomeness. Congratulations with being the patron of the Brisbane Dance Festival. I couldn't think of anybody better. Oh, thank and you. Um, yeah, thank you. Keep on doing your thing. I think you've got so much to offer and uh, beautiful, beautiful essence with oh. um, great inspiration. Thank you. Always so a much. pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs>